Right, okay everyone, I'm going to um, have a bit of a look at creating a graphical user interface. Okay, so essentially this is going to be um, a menu system. So I've downloaded a few things for the Viking themed game. One is an image, one is a logo with a name that I've added, and the other one is a font. Okay, it's a true type font. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene in the same project and this scene is going to be the menu so the idea is that the, the first scene that loads up will be this one and then when you press play for example it will take you to the scene we had open before which is the essentially the level okay so I'm going to save this scene I have um, navigated to the wrong place um, I'm going to load that up and I'm going to drag out the game tab this is so that we can see them both so I want to try and get this as a floating window <coughs> so this is that I can see uh, the scene and the game it makes it a lot easier to um, place things so within my um, project I'm going to drag in the font file the um, image, the large image, and the graphic of the ship with the title of the game. And yeah, that graphic does have a transparent background by the way, that's why it's a PNG. Okay, so for us to set up um, a user interface, first thing I'm going to go, game object UI, raw image. Okay, so this is where we can add an image to our um, interface okay we'll call this a uh, title image so this is going to be our ship where we have texture as part of the inspector we just drag our image into it and if I move this out of the way you will start to see that it does appear not very well but it does appear in the um, in the actual file okay so I'm just going to go to Windows Explorer and get the exact size of this image because you can see on there it looks a bit squished 575434 so I'm just going to remember that um, and change the size of this raw image to that it doesn't matter if it's too big the point is that we've got the right proportions we can then just use the scale tool to scale it all down it'll still keep the same proportions okay so Obviously there was a bit of an issue with working on one aspect ratio and then potentially our game being published in another, but we're just going to have to readjust things at that point if we need to. Okay, so I am now going to create another raw image, which comes up as a white square, and I'm going to drag our scene into it. I'm going to do something very similar, I'm going to go into Windows Explorer, and I'm just going to go to the properties and then the details <coughs> and I'm just going to check the uh, size again and that is massive but we get all we care about at the moment is the proportions so we change it to what the actual original image was and then we resize and position okay it's not the same aspect ratio as the frame so we will lose a bit but it doesn't matter um, as long as we can have a certain amount of the image um, filling up the screen. Okay, so you see I've actually, I've actually retextured the left hand side of that image a little bit just so that we've got a little bit of space for our logo and our buttons. Okay, so we just lower it slightly. And there we go. You'll see it's obviously it's gone over the top of the title, so I'm just going to drag the order so that the title now is over the top. I'm just going to rename the background object so that I can um, find it again easily later on. So the next thing that we're going to look at doing is we're going to look at creating some buttons. Okay, so I'm going to create some text and this text is very small but we'll be able to see it shortly. There you go. 
it says new text so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename or rewrite what it says within it and then I'm going to change the font and to change the font I'm just going to drag our font into the little box there and it will automatically change it for that font which is good it means we don't have to rely on people having the font um, installed if we change the overflow to overflow it means that we can create text that um, will end up being bigger than the box it's contained in and we'll still be able to see it okay so we're going to have a play and a quit button um, and the idea is that play is obviously going to take us to our level quit is going to ask us to confirm that whether or not we are sure we want to quit and if we press yes it will quit the game and if we press no it will go back to the menu okay so what I've got here um, is I've added a button component um, and I am changing the highlight color it doesn't always work um, when you're previewing it within Unity but it should when it gets published out okay so I've changed the highlight color here to um, something a little bit lighter I'm going to rename that <coughs> so I'm going to call it play button um, because we've now got a load of uh, button properties within that okay so that now that I've set one up the best way to do this now is to duplicate it because it's still already got um, the properties of the play button so we just need to change its name there and what it says and then just move it down okay so we can check that now we just change that to quit now we've got the both buttons now okay so if we press play um, it might not show the rollover um, but the rollover is there you can see it ever so slight change in colour when you roll over it here but it should, it should use the proper colours when we publish it out What we're going to do now is we are going to rename our canvas main menu. I'll fill in the caps lock out one day. Um, so we're going to label that main menu because what we're going to do is we're going to have a separate menu that loads up when you press quit. That's going to ask them if they're sure that they want to. <coughs> so we are going to create a new canvas, which is basically a holder for the menu. And we're going to rename it quit menu and we're going to just duplicate one of our buttons um, actually first of all we are going to create a label we're asking them if they are sure that they want to quit Okay, so we're going to change the font again. We're going to create um, an image. So here we go. Create our raw image. And for this one, we are going to change the colour. We're also going to look at the bottom channel, which is the alpha channel. And the alpha channel allows for us to just change the transparency a little bit so if we just turn that down a little bit just so we can see the image behind it slightly <coughs> and then we are going to change the size of this to something a bit more um, realistic a bit more informative so we're going to change the overflow again obviously um, so that we can see all of our text and then we're going to move so it's a bit more in the middle so 
I'm just going to do a bit, of, a bit of trial and error with this, um, just so that it, it creates some sort of um, background. We change the colour of the font. I need to change the the order of the of the background in the menu because we've got the wrong one on top. Okay, so that's reasonable for the size of, of the, the width of the background box but we also need to offer the yes or no options so I'm just going to change the height and then move it down so we've got space to put these buttons so I'm going to duplicate the play button I'm going to put it into there and this one is going to be a yes so yes you do want to quit Okay, so obviously it's appearing over in the same place as the other one, but we're just going to drag it across now. <coughs> and now that's in place, we can duplicate that one rather than the ones that are in the wrong place. So this one is going to be no, obviously. position that again okay so we're going to select them both now and just make sure they sit roughly in the middle obviously if you if you want this to be perfect you can start to use coordinates but that's okay for me okay so I've got two canvases main menu and quick menu and all of my things in the right canvas so now we can start to add a little bit of functionality So in terms of the functionality here, we have our script. Um, it's in C Sharp. Um, hopefully you can see if, if this goes too fast, you can pause this. Um, but we've got three public um, variables there that will all link to specific things. So when we drag this into our um, assets folder, then need to um, attach this script to one of our objects it's not specific which one it has to be but I'm going to pick the main menu so I'm just going to click and drag the script onto the main menu Let's try that again okay and now I'm going to add the quit menu to where it asks for a quit menu the play button to start text and the quit button to exit text so these are the things that are going to be visible in the first instance. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add some functionality to each button. So we scroll down to the event on click and we're going to click we're going to drag our main menu into this box where it says none. The only reason we drag the main menu is because that's what's got the script on it. So under the function we've now got our script and we've got a load of options including the ones that we um picked so that one is start level we do exactly the same thing add the main menu click on function down to menu script and this one is exit press because we've pressed quit and we're going to do our other two buttons which is the yes button and add the main menu because that's got the script on it function menu script and then this one is exit game because that's where we're actually going to exit the application and the last one is no so we're going to add again add the menu menu and then this is no press so now we've attached all the functionality to the different scripts so a few things if I press quit it should load the menu up if I press yes nothing will happen at the moment if I press no it goes back to the main menu if I press play we will get an error it's a scene build index one could not be loaded so that's what we need to fix so we've got no scenes in our build at the moment so we go to file build settings and you can see scenes in build none so first of all I'm going to add the open scenes which is here we 
we go. Let's drag our C1 into there. We'll see that menu is on level 0 and islands is on level 1, which is really important. So then we're going to press play. And we should, after we press play, it might take a little while before it's been published, but it then loads up our scene and we have a menu.